Okay, they can hear and see. Thank you very Good. much, family. Well, Shabbat Shalom. Let's start this over. This, this lesson is not really a lesson, but we want to talk to you about how the U.S. has finally abandoned Israel in well, we're favor. Wondering, we're wondering because um, Donald Trump is vowing to reverse anything that Obama does. That's right. So at the moment, it may appear to be that way, but we shall see. We shall see. That's so right. So that, it's a question. We're asking has the U.S. finally abandoned Israel? We're not really stating that they have because, again, you have um, yeah. one president who's on his way out and another on his way in who is... He's saying he's going to veto it all once he get in. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, back to what we were saying. What we were actually saying is that um, um, what's going on basically is that, um, <clears throat> you know, Israel is being occupied. Okay, mm -hmm. and they were already occupied by the Palestinians, right? And Israel was always expanding their borders by bombing these people that are already occupied, or destroying their homes, destroying their homes, and which I think is is crazy and wicked. But I mean, I'm not saying that we're on the Palestinian side because they're occupying our land because it's actually ours. So while they're over there fighting for our land, one day Yahushua is going to come back and actually give us our land. He's going to kick them all out, mm -hmm. and that's something. Yeah, when you think about what's going on right now, none of this resembles. I don't know if you all caught the first part of this. It's kind of difficult to know because the audio and video were going in and out. So I'll just repeat some of what I said. But none of this resembles what, what scripture or prophecy stated would be taking place when That's the right. real Israelites would be back in the land. Um, you know, the scripture says that um, war will be behind us. It would be no more. That's right. But that's all we've seen over there. And we've seen all this conflict and this back and forth. There's no peace there. That's right. There's all this conflict. There's wildfires and all kinds of strange things going on. The debacle that we're seeing right now has nothing to do with scripture, which kind that's of right. shows you and proves our point that... Our land is being trodden down by That's Gentiles. Right. That's right. That's what's going on right now. Uh, those are not the biblical Israelites. These are people who are occupying the land. And so I'm going to read um, a little bit of this article here on the BBC News um, website. It says, Israeli settlements. UN Security Council calls for an end of Israeli settlements. The United Nations Security Council has passed a resolution urging an end to illegal Israeli settlements after the U.S. refused to veto it. Now, n normally what happens is um, <clears throat> the U.S. does veto, but this time they're saying, you know what, we're not going to do that. We're just going to stay out of it, you know. Mm -hmm. Not really staying out of it, but they're not going to go against what the U.N. is saying. Exactly. But, um, again, you have President-elect Donald Trump, He's already saying that, oh, forget about that. On the 20th, January 20th, all that's going to be um, <laughs> oh, un, undone. Anything that Obama does is going to be undone. But anyway, I'm going to continue to read. It says, the Egyptian drafted resolution <coughs> has been withdrawn after Israeli, uh, I'm sorry, after Israel asked Donald Trump to intervene, but it was proposed again by Malaysia, New Zealand, Senegal, and Venezuela. The U.S. has traditionally sheltered Israel from condemnatory resolutions. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu <laughs> said he would not abide by the vote. In other words, he's saying, I don't care what you say, I'm still going to do whatever I want to do. And that's the attitude that they've taken um, for a very long time. That's right. When I say they, I'm talking about Caucasians in general. Mm -hmm. Their whole attitude is spoken of in Scripture. They're very prideful. And they say, right. who can bring me down? <laughs> who can bring me down? I'm not going to abide by your vote. I don't care what you vote. In other words, yep. I'm going to continue to go against um, the UN. I'm going to continue to um, break international law. Okay? Anyway, it says, Israel announced its ambassadors to New Zealand and Senegal had been ordered to return for consultations. Israel has no diplomatic ties with Malaysia and Venezuela. The Palestinian leadership welcomed the UN resolution, of course they did, which was passed by 14 votes to zero with one abstention. President-elect Trump, who will be inaugurated mm -hmm. on the 20th of January, tweeted after the vote, as the UN 
as as to the UN, things will be different after January twentieth. <laughs> okay. The issue of Jewish. You sound like a big kid. I hate to say it. <laughs> big jealous kid. All of them do. Yeah. They're, they're very childish and unfair people. <clears throat> okay, President, I'm sorry. The issue of Jewish settlements is one of the most contentious between Israel and the Palestinians who see them as an obstacle to peace. And their definition, peace means give us what, I, what we want. We'll kill as many of you as we <laughs> want. Okay? Now listen to this. It says about. 500,000 Jews live in about 140 settlements built since Israeli's 1967 occupation of the West Bank and East Jerusalem. The settlements are consider, considered illegal under international law, though Israel disputes this. Now, now get this here. It says since 1967. So you mean to tell me under interna international law, they were allowed to break international law? Now... When has this been allowed anywhere else? Anyone else go and they break international law? Guess what? The United States will be there and all the other countries will be there bombing them. But because it's the false Jews, huh? They won't go and, and try to stop them from doing this wickedness that they're doing. Mm hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Double standards, hypocrisy, Double standards, hypocrisy. pride. Um, sorcery, yep. witchcraft, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's just all over the world. Um, and people are tired of playing this this game. Yeah. Um, and so things are starting to happen, and the ties are starting to turn. Okay, I'm going to continue reading this article. It says the UN, I mean the U.S. policy reverse. Okay, the resolution reflects an international consensus that the growth of Israeli settlement building has come to threaten the viability of a Palestinian state in any future peace deals. In other words. How can we talk peace when you continue to tear down structures and kill people? There's no talk of peace. There's no real talk of peace. It's just a game these people are playing. And so they're saying it threatens any future peace talks if you're going to continue to tear down structures. That's We've right. seen documentaries where they actually show um, this, the Israeli um, army and um, demolition companies and all kinds of groups going in demolishing homes that are occupied by people women children it doesn't matter doesn't matter so it shows you the kind of mindset that we're dealing with a very destructive type people very destructive no regards for humanity whatsoever okay i'm going to finish this article so we can move on from this particular thing <clears throat> okay it says it is a view strongly shared by the Obama administration, and for that reason, the U.S. reversed its policy of vetoing any U.N. Security Council criticism of Israel. Now, like we said in the times past, they would veto anything that the, U the U.N. put out that went against Israel. They would veto it. That's right. But now they reversed their decision to do that. They're saying, you know what, we're not going to veto it this time. It is a decision that was taken after months of debate within the administration about whether and how President Obama might be able to define his position on a two-state solution before leaving office. But his successor, Donald Trump, has made clear he intends to strongly support Israeli government positions, even making a highly unorthodox intervention before the vote by pub publicly urging Mr. Obama to veto the resolution. So he's trying to... Um, strong arm the current president he hasn't even taken his seat yet <laughs> he ain't even taken his seat yet he's trying to strong arm him so that's that shows you the nature mm -hmm. of the people we're dealing with they are they there is no concern for anyone that is non-white that's right there's no respect for anyone that is non-white even though these people do have white in them obama has white in him the palestinians have white in them and for those of you who follow our channel you know why i'm saying that the Palestinians used to be the Philistines who were black. Yeah. And guess what? Some of the black Philistines are still there. That's right. But as in every nation, when you go to these other nations, they only show you the whited out version of the original people, meaning those who the seed of Edom has been inserted into. They don't show yeah. you the dark people anymore, like the dark Mex Mexicans, the dark Latinos, and the dark Asians. They show you all of the whited out versions That's or right. the Caucasian versions, their uh, versions. So even technically the Palestinians there, 
have Caucasian in their DNA as well because the original Pal Palestinians or Philistines That's right. were black. The whole area has been whited out. The yes. whole area literally has been, has been whited out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to read a little bit from this article here. This article here is at um, uh, News, ABC News, basically. It says, United States rebukes Israel and allows UN condemnation of settlements. Okay. Let me go down to this part here where it's titled, United mm -hmm. States has abandoned Israel. Okay, and it says, Israeli Energy Minister Yaval Steinitz responded saying the U.S. had abandoned Israel by abstaining. This is not a resolution against settlements. It is an anti-Israel resolution against the Jewish people and the state of the Jews. The United States tonight has simply abandoned its only friend in the Middle East, Mr. Steins, who is close to Mr. Netanyahu, who, lo who, who, who told local media. Now, that's really a lie. He says that the United States' only friend in the Middle East is who? The Jews? Well, that's a big lie. Because we know that the United States has been in the bed with who? Kuwait for years. What are you talking about? When Kuwait was under attack by who? Saddam Hussein, uh, United States, and every Bush in them, they rose up quickly to go and help their allies. So they're not the only people they have in the middle. See how they put those words out there? They have you think, oh, now, uh, now, now um, 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 United States don't have no one else in the Middle East, so the Middle East is unprotected. That's just a bunch of, that's just a big lie. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's a big lie. Okay, so... That's just how it is. You know, they're always pushing these lies out there. So now let's look at this. It says, in a settlement, Mr. Netanyahu said Israel looked forward to working with Mr. Trump to counter any effects of the U.N. Security Council resolution. The Obama administration not only failed to protect Israel against this gang up at the U.N., it concluded, it, it, I'm sorry, it colluded with it behind the scenes, he said. Now, I've got news for you, Israel. Okay, you study worrying about whether the United States is going to protect you, anyone else is going to protect you. But I want to tell you this, okay, when the Messiah comes back, ain't going to be no protection for you. In other words, I'm going to just say something about our last week's lesson. Yeah. If y'all be against you, who, who can, can be, be for you? you? No matter if you got the light, let me tell you something, Israel, and you Jews that's in Israel right now. You can have the United States for you. You can have Russia for you. You can have every nation on this planet for you. But I guarantee you, the scripture already told you what's going to happen in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. It already told you huh, what the Most High is going to do. It's going to be blood the, at, the, at the height of a horse's bridle. There's going to be a feast of Yah there in that valley. It's called the Valley of Decision or the, the Battle of Armageddon. Okay, all of that is going to take place down there. It's going to be so many bodies to the point where Yah said, and this is in Israel, to where Yah said that he's going to call the eagles to come and feast on your bodies because it's going to be that. It's going to be called the Supper of Yah. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be people sitting at the table carving up turkey and <laughs> no, around no. steaks and beef and roast nope. and stuff like that. There'll be none of that. Yeah, it's going to be this time the Most High, he's going to be serving it up. Because yeah. there is so much wickedness that has gone on for so long yep. that the world is growing tired. And yep. the Most High has grown tired. Grown tired. And so now he is changing the tides. That's so right. I just did a, um, a video the other day where I was discussing the... Um, decline in white population. Now this was an article that you all put out and you were talking about how your birth rates are low, your infertility rates are high, <coughs> you're an aging population and you're not reproducing faster than you're dying. Okay, and I wanted to make mention too that um, Israelis are a Caucasian race. You all try to separate yourself from white people. Okay, <laughs> there is no separation. Um, you're all Caucasian and That's right. the, the, the gig is up okay all of this deception and sorcery and yeah. witchcraft that has been put on the world the Most High is exposing all of this garbage because yeah. it is time it is the, it's the valley of decision That's right. the Most High is pouring out his judgments that's right okay it's time it's, it's long it's overdue, time. It's overdue. <clears throat> he said I gave you space to repent 
May you repent of course, in that. <laughs> of course, he was talking about Jezebel. Mm -hmm. But that that goes. He for always he too. always give everybody a space to repent. So you're right yes. on that. Yep. Yes, he's talking about everyone. He said, "I've made a way of escape for every man." But That's you right. know, many of you um, chose not to repent. As a matter of fact, it talks about Edom. Um, it says, "Though he sought repentance with tears, he couldn't find it." What happens is, uh, for a moment, you may feel like, "Hmm." I think I want to do right. But then you get to a point where you say, you know what, I just can't do right. Mm -hmm. Something comes up. It's like the Most High put it in your mind. He made you reprobate, okay? He put it in your mind to where you cannot repent. And this is why they, you all find it so difficult to even accept who we are. You know, some of you will accept it for a moment, then all of a sudden you can just go out of your mind. I mean, I saw one um, white Gentile male went out of his mind cussing and berating and all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. when he was talking about so-called black people. He acknowledged that we were Yah's chosen people, but then he went off on this, this um, hateful tirade about it all, talking about how disgusting black people are. That's why the Most High got rid of us, because we're just disgusting, evil, wicked people. That's why he can't stand us. He hates us, and he gave the heritage to, to um, the Gentiles. I mean, he, everything he said was completely unbiblical. That's right. Now, the Most High said he was going to punish us, but he said that you all were going to take it too far. And even with running his mouth like that, he claims to be grafted in. You took it too far that time, bub. You took it too far. You ran your mouth too much. Don't think for one moment yep. that the Most High Yah did not hear that. And even if you go and say, well, I'm sorry for all those things. I said, the Most High said, look, I know your dirty heart. Yep. You're just running your mouth. You really ain't sorry. You still can't stand my people because for a person to open up their mouth like that and say all of that stuff like that, that out of the heart <coughs> speaks the issues of life. That's right. Now I want you. I want you to understand something. My wife hit, hit this right on the money too. They're all the same. That's all Edom. The Jews over there, as you see now, are Edom. This is why they put so much, so much information out there, trying to prove that the white man or the, or the um, Caucasian that came out of Europe is actually Edom. They actually helped put the information out there about that, because they're trying to get you off the simp that they themselves are Edom also. But I got proof. Ah, uh, you know I got proof, right? This I got scripture, a scripture here. For you. <laughs> <laughs> I got one for you. If you go to Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 5, listen to the scripture. It says, Therefore thus saith Yah, Yahuwah, Elohim, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. The heathen. And against all Idumia. Idumia is Edom. Yes. Look it up for yourself. Take the word Idumia and look it up for yourself. That's Edom. That's Esau. Okay? Which I have, uh, which, what did Edom do? What did Idumia do? Which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds that cast it out for prey. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys, saith Yahuwah Elohim. Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. What heathen? Because he said the heathen has gone into the land of Israel and have taken it over. What heathen is he referring to? Idumia, mm -hmm. Edom, <coughs> Esau. Okay, Esau of good. So, so he's letting you know they're the same people. Yeah, <laughs> they're the same people. Mm -hmm. You see, so that's just it. When when we go into our land, the scripture tells us that we will be at peace. Now, I want to share that scripture for you real quickly here. Look yeah. at this scripture. Go ahead. Um, before you go off to the peace part, I want to talk about the the scripture too that says. Um, um, Edom was even one of them. He he made ways for the, um, he, he um, helped the Grecians, and then it says, "And you were even one of them." <laughs> so for those who think that um, that we, they say that um, the people who took us, we we didn't know their language or whatever. That's right. Okay, the Grecians, but remember there was a mixing and a mingling of Edom with many nations. That's right. And the scripture even said that you, Edom, you were one of them. You stood there in That's the way right. and you actually helped them. You actually helped so them. So there's a multitude of different people who took part in our demise. That's and right. Edom was one of them. Edom was one of them. You know, he broke it, the brotherly covenant. And when you look at Edom, as far as today, he what he did what? He went out and he 
conquered the world. He conquered the world, and what did he do? He subjected people to his wickedness, and he did what? He raped the women, and he spread his seed all over the planet. You see, mm -hmm. that's Edom mm -hmm. that have done this thing. For those of you who are um, seeing the video kind of distorted or whatever, um, we are recording this with our regular camera. Yes. So that you'll be able to go back. We'll just upload that afterward um, so that you can hear everything that you're not hearing now. Exactly. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this scripture here. Did you have something else you wanted oh, to? Oh, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read this scripture here. See, the scripture tells you what's going to be like when it's time for Yah's people to go back into the land. So this actually proves that the people that's in the land of Israel today are false. Okay. They are identity thieves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's exactly what they are. Okay. This is Isaiah chapter 11. It says, there shall come forth a rod of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its out of his roots. And the spirit of Yahuwah shall rest upon him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and of fear of Yahuwah, and and shall make him quick of quick understanding in the fear of Yahuwah, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after hearing of his ears. But with the righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove iniquity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And the righteous shall be girded of his loins and the faithfulness the, gir the girdle of his, of his reins. And the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lay down with the kid and the calf with the young lion and the fatling together, and the and the and little children shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed, and their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like at like the ox. <laughs> That's amazing. And the suckling child shall prey on the whole of the apse, and the weaned child shall put forth his hand on the cockatrice den, and and they shall not hurt nor destroy all my holy mountain. For all the earth shall full of, be full of the knowledge of Yahuwah as the waters cover the sea. So you hear what he's saying? Mm. It's going to be peace. It's going to be peace. He's going to even bring peace over the whole entire planet. You see? Mm. So all of this stuff about the, these these uh, people that's in the land, and they are the true people, that's all false. You need to, if any one of you still believe that they could possibly could be of Yah's people, just toss that right out your mind right now mm -hmm. because they are not Yah's people at all. At all. And this is why so much turmoil is going over in that land today. All the war and all that stuff. When Yosha come back, he's going to clean house. It's going to be quick. Yes. Very quick. Mm -hmm. Well, we were, we were here to talk about um, what's going on in Israel now. Um, I do see the discussion about whether Esau is the Arab or the white man. That's one of those things that um, continues to go up and be in many debates about. I just recently Actually, did a couple of videos video that about too. that as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. And what's interesting is when people don't study history, they, they kind of go in that direction. Um, history shows you that Esau planted his seed in all nations around the world. Mm -hmm. And so this is why you have... Um, pale looking Arabs. Let me so, there's, so there's a little bit of truth to that. Only a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, Esau um, did plant his seed in the so-called um, Arabs, um, the Latinos and many other racial groups of people. Um, the Asians, they all started off dark-skinned family. Yeah. The earth was populated with dark-skinned people and the white man went around the world raping okay right. and so there is some truth to that but the white man in and of himself is um most of them are esau let me explain something to you i want you to think about this real quick here this actually settles it because i know a lot of people saying well esau was jacob's brother they were both brothers of the seed of abraham okay let me explain something to you right <laughs> okay and think about what i say here just think about what i'm saying right we know that the entire earth was destroyed by the flood, right? Mm -hmm. And Noah came forth and gave, and, and his wife gave birth to three sons, right? Now, these sons were all black, and they all populated the earth. So, where did this white man come from then? 
You see, it's easy to sit back and say that, wait a minute, they were brothers, they were brothers. Okay, yeah, they were brothers. But where indeed did this white man come from? He had to come from somebody, right? I want okay. to say this too. For those of you who say, well, Japheth, they didn't have a white son. Japheth was black too. Japheth was black too. Japheth was whited out. Yeah. Okay. So for those of you who always say that, um, Japheth was whited out. Um, whited out three. Whited out three actually connect makes the connection between between Esau and Japheth blending together. We got scripture to prove it. Mm. Go and watch Whited Out Three. It describes it all, so we we don't have to go over that again. Mm -hmm. It's in Whited Out Three. We talked about how how in the Book of Jasher it shows how Esau's grandson actually went and conquered the Isles of Yepheth and they all became one people. It actually says that. Mm -hmm. They became one people. So Yepheth and Esau, that's what you see in the day. Mm -hmm. A blended people. And here's a good point too, Brother Nawa Rawabi. He's here um, making, Shalom. <laughs> making the, um, the comparison of the hair. Um, that is true, Brother, because the scripture does tell you very clearly. It says that um, two manner of people or nations shall come out of your womb. So I was letting you know that there was a difference. That's right. But uh, what we've said to people many times before is that Esau himself was not the white man that you see today with right. the with the blonde hair and the blue eyes and all of that. Yeah, he his seed was even spoiled. That's right. Yeah, Esau's seed was spoiled. Okay, where, so where his a, look actually changed. That's more, right. His look changed more, more because that's right. he was clearly different. We do, do know he was different, but he wasn't the white race that you see today with the that's stringy right. hair. He probably looked more like an albino. Um, there was a movie done in Africa. I think it's called Genesis or something like that. Um, it gave to me a more realistic depiction of what Esau probably right. looked like, but it wasn't as European you see today. Uh, what you see today is a further spoiling of Esau's seed. The scripture tells you that his seed was right. spoiled, spoiled. The Most High said, I have uncovered Esau. I have made him bare. Think about what Esau did, right? He went and he married who? Canaanite women. Canaanites were what the seed, the seed of the fallen angels. In those days, they were the seed of fallen angels, the mm -hmm. Canaanites, right? Mm -hmm. That's why Israel, when they looked out at the land of Canaan, they said, it's full of giants. Well, we know giants came from who? The fallen angels. Mm. So Esau, when he took these women of the fallen angels and his seed became spoiled as a result of it. That's yes, right. So remember in Daniel 2 and 43, That's it right. says, And they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's right. Now, who are the they? Yes. It's talking about all those nations that were before that would be that were um, of of the different metals. These nations are seeds of fallen angels. That's the Media Persia. That's the Greeks. That's the Romans. That's Babylon. It says they, meaning these seed of the fallen angels, are going to mingle their seed with who? The seed of men, the clay. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So when you get to mingling seed, bone structures <clears throat> change. Someone in the chat asked. Uh, what about their bone structure is much different than ours. Absolutely, it Absolutely, is. Absolutely, yeah. Because of the mingling of the seed, um, all of this, all of these different looks have come about. Okay, that's right. Um, even when you look in um, in um, gardening, I'll take gardening for instance. Uh, we've we've experienced seeing where a cucumber and a um, cantaloupe, if they're planted too close together, you're going to get this funny shaped cucumber. We've seen it happen in our garden <laughs> where you'll get this really fat looking <laughs> long right. cucumber that has yellow flesh on it because there was a mingling of the seed that took place. So it gave you a strange looking, because it was the cucumber that was, um, that was um, pollinated by um, some of the um, seed of the cantaloupe, <laughs> you get a strange shape cucumber. That's right. That's, that's one of the best ways I can explain it. But uh, that's what happens when you mix the seed, the seed of man with the seed of fallen angels. That's right. Um, you get the strange looking DNA or the strange looking or different looking human being. That's right. Absolutely. So we're doing a lot of research on it. Let me tell you something. We have done so much research on Esau. And I'm telling you, we've covered every end. Every end where people try to say that, no, that's not Esau, whatever. We have looked into all of that stuff. We have books, historical books that are two, three hundred years old that I have um, purchased. And that deals with Esau and his language, the change of his language and all of that stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you right now. 
this thing about Esau, like I, I listened to somebody say one time that this, you know the the Arabs are Esau. No, the Arabs can't be Esau because the scripture tells you the Arabs are, e, are Ishmael. Everybody knows the Arabs are Ishmael. You can't get around the Arabs being Ishmael. You can't. Right. They can't be both Esau and Arabs. So That's if, like many, <clears throat> many of them will acknowledge that even. Yeah, yeah. Many of the Arabs today they know they're the seed of, of Ishmael. As a matter of fact, when we were when we lived in Detroit <laughs> or in Michigan, yeah. a lot of the Arabs that were there would even say that. Yeah, they would <laughs> say they come from they Ishmael. Know their yeah. You know, yeah, they know right. their history. Yeah. Now, what, when we were saying that there's a little bit of truth to it, we were saying that, yes, the white man did go over there and do some uh, raping among right. the Arabs as well, or breeding, whatever you want That's to call right. it. So they did mingle their seed with Ishmael right. too. But Ishmael started off black. Abraham was black. Hagar was black. So right. Abraham and Hagar's son Ishmael was black. This white flesh you see today yep. came from somewhere. That's okay. Right. Even they acknowledge it. Now we yep. did a video on um, Enoch, okay? Yeah. And we were contacted by some Asians, or should I say an Asian fella, and some Gentiles or some white um, men. One guy said he always knew that there was something strange. He says, I don't get into all that religious stuff, but he says, I believe there's some truth to what you guys are saying. Now, when people are religious, they get infuriated and angry about what you're saying. But when you have a person that's, that has a secular background to where they're not even into the religious part, <coughs> they listen to what you're saying and they say, hmm. Yep. Now, this guy, he contacted us and he uh, sent us some information um, about um, something he, a lot of things that he's created or invented. And he says, oh, I believe that there is some truth to what you guys are saying about white people coming from somewhere else. Okay. He said, I don't subscribe to that um, fallen angel stuff. He says, I think we're more like aliens. Now, this is a white guy saying this to, to us. <laughs> he sure did. And he said, he said, because I get these thoughts in my head of strange inventions. And see, he says, next thing you know, I'm creating this thing. I'm bringing it into fruition. I think of it and then I bring it into fruition. Isn't that amazing? You see, a white testimony of what's going on inside his head. That's right. Okay. And we got a similar testimony from an Asian guy who says that um, he doesn't subscribe to the religious part either, but he, do, do, he does hear things and feel things going on inside of his body and mind that seems to tug him or pull him in, in more than one direction. And so we're not trying to be insulting here. We're just trying to state facts. Some of them or some so-called white people do acknowledge that they are not fully human. That's right. But those of a religious persuasion get offended because they know if they, if they admit that, then, um, if they admit that they are not fully human, then they have to. There's some repenting that they have to do. There's something right. that they have to do, and most people don't want to do um, what it is that's required to save their soul because they want to save face here on earth. You want to make an appearance for people and appear to be a certain way, but that's forget right. about that. You need to tend to your soul. That's if right. there's a way of escape for you, you need to take that way of escape and stop trying to impress people because that's you right. will find yourself in a devil's hell. Devil's hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I tell you, it's, it's just, you know, looking at this whole story, what we uh, we kind of got a little off, off track because we were talking about the the um, UN and all this, but you know it's all Esau. Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled. You look at the UN, you see all those folks that's sitting up over there. The good majority of them got Esau's blood in them. You know. Now we don't believe that every white person is Esau, but we believe that a good majority, especially the European nations, you know, are all Esau. No doubt about that. They're all Esau. The European nations. And it could be some mixing and mingling. They got to get light skin from the fallen angels, basically, is where that came from. Yes, um, to the chef, yes, we did say that the white, the Arabs have been whited out. Yes. Um, many nations have been whited been out. whited out, that's right. Even in um, Ethiopia, there is some evidence of whiting out over there. That's I mean, right. they haven't completely whited out. Um, like some of the Arab nations and some of the Asian nations because they're new, is new, pretty much. That's right. But... 20, 30 years ago, the majority of Ethiopians look straight up just black, dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. Now you're starting to see lighter and lighter Ethiopians because they are mingling that seed too. The same with Australia. 
Um, those children with the blonde hair, um, they sold us a bill of goods to try to make <laughs> us believe that um, that was a natural occurrence over there. That's how they look, but that was, I remember I read a book that was called, uh, it actually wasn't a book, it was um, Life Magazine years ago. I had, an, I had a magazine that was, uh, I think it was around 1961, 1962, it was old, it was pretty old. But it had Kumbaya on it and it showed these Aborigine kids that were darker than, darker than, uh, dark as Hamite. And they had blonde hair, and they all sing a kumbaya. Mm -hmm. Kumbaya, isn't that amazing? They were singing kumbaya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, and um, they were trying to let you see that they were trying to make you think that they this is how they look. These Aborigines actually look this way. No, they didn't. They but when you go back to Chirgani, which is one, which was a. Um, she was one of the early. Um, she was the last full-blooded. Yeah, last Aborigine. one of the last full-blooded Aborigines back in those days. She had coarse hair. Yes. And it was black. Mm -hmm. You see, and she had very black features and everything. But now the Aborigines to this day, a lot of them look so mixed it ain't funny. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when they gave out reparations to uh, right. some of the Aboriginals, it was their offspring that they gave it to because most of the people that were in the audience on this this one documentary we saw most of them look white but they had those um odd looking aboriginal features you know the, they have a strange a distinct look so these people had that look but they had uh the hair of white people some blonde looking um, some brown looking and they had white skin. That's right. And so whenever they give out reparations, think about the Native Americans, even with them. Um, they don't want to give any type of reparations to the dark skin Choctaws. That's right. But they, they are always giving it to the pale skin because they know that that's their offspring. They know that their ancestors back way back when raped and got the um, skin tone to where it is. I mean, it is what it is, family. Some of you who are watching us uh, for the first time or you're new to this, no, we are not being racist. We're trying to kick some knowledge to you. We're trying to share some history with you. <laughs> yeah. Because what you've been taught in the public fool system has been a lie. And um, the Most High is undoing these lies. We're not the only people who teach from this um, perspective, there are even Gentiles, so-called white people, who teach some of the same stuff that we are teaching right now because it's time for the truth to be unveiled. The scripture says that there's going to be an increase in knowledge. That's right. Knowledge shall be greatly increased in the, in the last days, and that's what you see happening right now. That's right. Absolutely. Well, I tell you, it's amazing looking at these things um, uh, unfold in the news and things that's mm -hmm. going on. and. I mean, I've, I've known this for years. It's just a matter of time before um, all nations come against. It's in Scripture. Look, you want to see it? I got prophecy for you. Let's listen to this here. I got prophecy. Let's go to, um, I think this is Ezekiel. Let me just research it real quick. Uh, do a quick search. Okay, this is coming from Ezekiel. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 38. Listen to this here real quickly. Okay, we're going to start at verse 1. Okay. Okay. It says, And the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, and the chief prince of Mesach and Tubal. Mesach and Tubal, that's Moscow and Tabasco. And if you do your research, you'll see that's what that is. Interpret it from, um, into that language. It says, And prophesy against him. Say, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, Behold, I am against thee, O God, <coughs> chief prince of Mesach and Tubal. I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thy army and horses and horsemen, all them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, the Prince of Persia, Ethiopia, Libya with them, and all them with shield and helmet, and Gomer and all his bands, and the house of Togamath, and, and the north quarters. And those that know, they mentioned Ethiopia and Persia, right? Mm -hmm. And you know the scriptures tell, talks about when you see the uh, river Euphrates dry up to make, war, make way for who? The armies, that's what it's talking about here. Okay, mm -hmm. there are these armies is making way for these armies here. Mm -hmm. And all his bands and all the people with thee, be thou prepared, prepare thyself and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou on guard after many days. Thou shalt be visited in the latter years. And let me go a little further down here because I didn't want to, I actually want to try to read all of this. 
But it says, um, okay. one moment, family. Yeah, one moment. But basically, it talks about how he's going to bring them against the land of Israel. Okay, if you read through that passage, that's what it's talking about. Okay, the wars is going to come against Israel. The Israel is there now. Okay, they're going to come against Israel, and that's when you're going to get your what, what's referred to as the Battle of Armageddon. Okay, mm -hmm. but so, you know, these, I don't know why they think that everything's going to be all right. That's why I always tell people, well, you want to go to Israel. I wouldn't want to be over there for nothing in the world because I know what's coming there. Okay, the Most High is going to judge the lands there in the Valley of Decision. Okay, in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. A and lot of blood. It's gonna be a lot of blood, a lot of slain there, okay? And so Israel, those the nations that's over there now are gonna be literally destroyed. You mm -hmm. see? Yes. Yeah, so why would you wanna be there? Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't even want to visit, I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> I did a video about that not long ago where I said when I go over there I want it to be when the most high puts his people back in the land. I don't want it to um I don't want to go over there and visit and have to get permission from wicked people to move about in the land that was promised to us. What kind of sense does that make? We have to sign papers and documents and if you go and live there, you have to join the Israeli army. That's right. Or your children do. That's right. So, again, that does not line up with prophecy. It don't. Prophecy never said that we would have to do those things yeah. in order to be gathered back into our own land. So that's further proof. That Go there and be a slave. <laughs> yeah. That's further proof that the people that are there are not Yah's children because yeah. it does not line up with prophecy. If you believe those people in Israel today are the Israelites, then you might as well rip your Bible up and throw it in the fireplace because you don't believe anything in that Bible if you believe those people are the Israelites. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I tell you, um, well, on that note, you know, I want you all to um, uh, pay attention to the news because <laughs> we're going to see some things in the news that's going to be kind of shocking. You know, we're going to see some things that's going to transpose over the, over the next few years. So I'm telling everybody, just be aware. Be aware. Don't be in La La Land. You know, come out of La La Land. You know, um, um, those cell phones and video games and all that stuff got our people's mind. Mm -hmm. We all tangled up into what what this person doing and what that person doing over there and, mm -hmm. and night clubbing and, and, and um, banqueting and having fun. You know, we just want to get get together and have fun all the time. Let's have some fun. Yep. You know, and I'm going to tell you right now, in the midst of you having fun, the bottom is about to fall out from under you. Now, I don't know if you remember the video that came on... on um, it was on, on YouTube where it showed all these people in a, in a club. They were all dancing and everything, right? Just jumping up and down, dancing, and the floor fell out from under them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, just fell Jewish. out from under them. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that a Jewish party, too? No, no, it wasn't yeah. a Jewish party. It was, that, it was, it was one party. of those. It was one, and it was a Christian one, too. Yeah, a Christian party, mm -hmm. yeah. And the bottom of the floor just fell out from under them. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all gonna come in and party like this? <laughs> floor. So don't get, don't keep it in mind, okay? The scripture lets you know, right, that, that we're going to be shaken. Yes. Okay? So don't get so caught up into the fun thing. Forget about fun. Forget about entertainment right now. Okay? This ain't the time for fun and entertainment. 30, 40 years ago, okay, have your fun and entertainment. But right now, mm -hmm. this is the time to be aware of what's going on around you. Playtime is over. Yeah, playtime is over. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, on that note, did you have anything else you want to... See? No, we will join you all again tomorrow, Yah Willing Family. Um, That's right. At 12 o'clock Central Standard Time for Shabbat. That's right. Service. And um, we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. We just wanted to briefly cover, cover this subject, but we also have to get some rest this evening. That's right. So with that, we will say we love you, family. We love you. And Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Mm -hmm. Finally stopped. Oof. I'm going to cut off the whole beginning of it, all that mess up that was there. I'm going to cut all that off. I ain't going to worry about it right now. But um, I want to get at least four of them in real quick, okay? Mm -hmm. That I want to do. I was trying to get some of the scriptures before you, um, before we got done. <laughs> okay. okay.
Somebody said I look like I'm 20 years old. <laughs> That's what you're saying. I got me a young one to rejoice with the life of that you. You still got tickled guts, you know? You ain't supposed to be tickling Usually my guts. Usually you get, when you get to be 30, stop 40 it. years old, your guts stop tickling. Stop it. But you still got tickled guts, you know? I think I I'll always tickled. be ticklish. Mm, I just love Regardless of how, uh, how old I get, I think I'll you know, always I be ticklish. I love you so much, you know I that. love you too, baby. I love you so much. I love these ribs. <laughs> my baby. I love you too, sweetheart. Okay. I could probably do one with you. Okay. Good. I got to get over there to my babies and, and I'm tired. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay. Can you think of anything quick? I got two. I'm trying to. I want to at least get four. That'll give me a little time. Oh, something I was reading yesterday in Amos. Hmm. Can we go to Amos? Sure. You can find it in this book. <laughs> no, I didn't see this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Testament, they didn't find Amos yet. Joel Amos. My opinion, I think you should just kept them all in, in the same order. Forget forget the order that they were originated in. Who cares? You know what I mean? You can still read it. You know, here's Amos for you. There you go. Hold on. There is a so-called Christian who have been making videos of the Watchmen by the name of G-Man. I have strong dissatisfaction with his videos on these nice people. G-Man. <laughs> oh, thank you, man.